Well, what are some of these uh, snake-like crafty acts? Uh, let's just discuss two examples. Uh, here's one, materialism. Now, this has brought down many elders, ministerial servants, pioneers, publishers, very successful crafty act of the devil. It's no coincidence that this world is powerfully geared to promote materialism. Relentless advertising messages are designed to indoctrinate deeply the idea that acquiring abundant material possessions and acquiring happiness are inseparably linked and directly proportional. That's really uh, the message the world gives. Isn't that true? And if we're not careful, we can begin to think, like this advertising messages want us to think, that we're a poor, poor loser if we don't acquire abundant material things. So what can happen? We can get sucked into this little by little. We buy one item, no problem. We can uh, handle that. We buy something else. Well, now we need to work a little bit of overtime to make the payments. We keep buying. Now we need to take a second job. Little by little, we're missing meetings, service, less time for personal study, the more important things. And little by little, we could call Satan the God of gradualism will take us away from Jehovah by means of materialism. I can't help but cringe at the spectacle of governing body member Stephen Lett bemoaning materialism as he's doing here, given what we know about his financial dealings. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, here is a clip from an excellent YouTube channel. You should all subscribe if you haven't done so already. The YouTube channel is Blue Envelope. Here is what my colleague Phil uncovered about one of Stephen Lett's material acquisitions. And then we don't really see too much from Steve for quite a while. And that kind of makes sense because he, he went to Bethel in 98. Um, he joined the governing body in 99. So, you know, he would have gotten pretty busy the next few years. But don't worry, we're not done with him just yet. We see him pop up again in 2013. And this is where it gets kind of interesting. So in October 2013, Tim, Steve, and Steve's wife, Susan, go in together on a $500,000 waterfront property in Gulf Shores, Alabama. And uh, as we can see, they split it. 50% ownership by Tim and 50% by Steve and Susan. And so the doc specifically calls out that it won't be Tim's home or even a second home, and it's not going to be Steve and Susan's home either. This is, as far as I can tell, strictly an investment property. So if a governing body member has a spare $250,000 in his bank account, and he decides not to donate those extra funds to the organization, but decides instead to use them to invest in real estate, what does he get? One thing he absolutely doesn't get, Phil, is freedom of speech. This is what Stephen Lett has just said about materialism. Materialism. Now, this has brought down many elders, ministerial servants, pioneers, publishers, very successful crafty act of the devil. It's no coincidence that this world is powerfully geared to promote materialism. Relentless advertising messages are designed to indoctrinate deeply the idea that acquiring abundant material possessions and acquiring happiness are inseparably linked and directly proportional. That's really uh, the message the world gives. Isn't that true? What a hypocrite. He has the goal. <laughs> to stand on the annual meeting platform and bemoan materialism, bemoan the fact that it's brought down ministerial servants, elders, publishers, even though as recently as 2013, not even 10 years ago, even though as recently as 2013, he went in on an investment property to the tune of 250,000 if you split that 500k 250,000 
Stephen Lett just had spare as someone who is in the special order of full-time servants as a Bethelite and has therefore taken a vow of poverty. Here is my 2004 copy of the Dwelling Together in Unity booklet. This is a booklet that's given to all Bethelites and you're supposed to hand them in if you ever leave Bethel. Fortunately, one Bethelite sent me this for my collection. And it's the rule book for Bethelites. And it contains, on page 15, I don't know whether you can see there, it contains the vow. A vow of obedience and poverty. And let's have a look, shall we? <laughs> As an ordained minister wholly dedicated to Jehovah God, I hereby express my solemn desire to be recognized as a member of the worldwide order of special full-time servants of Jehovah's Witnesses, the order. I vow as follows, and if we scroll down to points five and six, to abstain from secular employment without permission from the order to turn over to the local organization of the order all income received from any secular work or personal efforts in excess of my necessary living expenses, unless released from this vow by the order. Isn't that convenient? Imagine, <laughs> imagine if you get to decide what the order expects of an individual Bethelite because you are a governing body member so that you can get thousands of Bethelites to sign up to this so that an ordinary Bethelite is compelled to hand over whatever meagre funds they have that are in excess of their necessary living expenses all the while, a different standard applies to you, even though you're also a Bethelite and even though you've also signed up to this vow, you've pledged yourself to this vow, a different standard applies to you because you're making the decisions. You get to decide who is made exempt by the order so that you can invest in a waterfront property with your brother to the tune of 250k. It's not a home. It's not somewhere for him to live at any point, either now or in the future. It's an investment property. It's a business. It's a means for him to acquire income from rentals and that sort of thing. Different standard. I hope at least one or two Bethelites are watching this. You're being done over, folks you're being properly done over. I hope you haven't had to hand over too much of your money, too much of your excess funds. All the while, this scam artist, this charlatan, who has the gall to stand on the annual meeting platform and lecture about materialism, applies a different standard to himself and I'm sure is laughing all the way to the bank.